Welcome to Tech Confidentials Behind the Money. I'm Mary Kathleen Flynn at the Econ Ad Seminar, and I'm talking with Dennis Miller from Spark Capital. Dennis, one of the trends we've been talking about here today is, is monetizing online video, right. and there are a lot of challenges in that. What do you see as the biggest obstacles? I think it's a couple of things. I think the advertisers are still very concerned about where their ads are showing up. And when you end up distributing this advertising over so many different sites, you know, it could be on YouTube and VO and, you know, specific web sites, web, you know, any kind of, you know, specific sites pertinent to that content. And advertisers want to know where is it going to show up? How is it going to play? Is it play before? Are they going to click on it? Is it going to be an overlay ad? So you got multiple players, multiple sites, and even though they all talk about the promise of it, they're still very loath to actually write checks in that space. So it's uh, it's still ahead of us. It's you know we're not we're not there yet. And are there particular technologies that you are looking to that you think will help optimize online video? Yeah, we've uh, we've invested in one called AdMeld. We've seen a number of them right now that help you track the video. We've seen ones that help optimize between the 50 ad networks that are out there right now. So if you're a publisher, instead of two guys in a room with an Excel spreadsheet trying to figure out what's the top you know, CPM you can get, you, have, you can do this on the fly now so it scales much better than, than humans doing it. Um, and I think a lot of technology allowing advertisers to know where their stuff's showing up and how people are interacting with it. So we're looking across all of that you know, continuum. What about ad networks? Do they um, in interest you? You know, they have. We've looked at a number of verticals. I think it's a little bit late now in the U.S. market. There's so many. Almost every vertical's covered. And a lot of them are just rep firms with sales guys out there. Um, I think there's a few exceptions. Uh, I think that Glam got certain size that allowed it to kind of move ahead of the pack. Certainly Ad.com that AOL owns. Federated John Battelle's company has been like specialized in high-end blog sites and publishers. But a lot of them are just kind of no technology. We'll sell a whole bunch of publishers, stick them together, and I think those guys are going to get you know consolidated, and the margins are going to get compressed significantly. And is there a perception out there about with some ad networks that this, this is sort of a lot of leftover inventory that nobody oh, sure. really wants? A lot of the publishers are saying we'll sell our own. We'll let our five guys sell at fifteen dollars CPMs. You know, just our auto site to the top car dealers or top you know auto manufacturers, and you can have all the remnant inventory. And you know that stuff is you know the effective CPMs can be 30, 50, 70 cents, you know, which is very tough to build a business around. Yeah, obviously, one of the reasons we like following Spark Capital is because of your early stage investing, and it's an, an interesting climate right now in early right. stage investing. In particular, without without the IPOs as an exit, um, you know, is, are you finding yourselves doing more diligence? Uh, is, is it harder to take a risk? No, I, I don't think we do any, we do the same amount of diligence. It's always been a really high risk business. I think you can't market time. So, you know, six months ago was fantastic. Today it's, oh my God, the credit markets, what's it all mean? What about exits? And you can't build businesses thinking about what's, you know, the market going to look like six months from now. So we kind of put that out of our heads, even though it's hard because you read every day, you know, what's going on out there and try to bet on really unique idiosyncratic entrepreneurs who have some kind of unfair advantage in a really big market. You know, it's that simple, it's just very hard to find all three of those in, in the same spot. Okay, well one person that comes to mind that you back that I think of when you say that is David Carp. The old man, the, yes. The 21-year-old yes. founder of Tumblr. <laughs> right. Um, very interesting entrepreneur with a microblogging mm -hmm. tool. Who's the next David Carp for Spark Capital? Uh, we have that. We haven't announced it yet, but it'll be in the next couple of days. And uh, in fact, Next New Networks, our broadband content site, led us to David Carp because he was working there. And now David Carp, we invested in, and David led us to the next one. Uh, in the kind, I can tell you, it's kind so of in the. Of it's another friend of David, so you can go see who he's blogging about these days oh, and maybe figure it out. But uh, we're we're kind of you know six degrees of David right now, so uh, <laughs> he's been a great you know secret weapon for us. All right, well I know who I'm emailing as soon as we're done with the interview. <laughs> I'm sure right? you will. Thank you, Dennis Miller My pleasure. from Spark Capital, and thank you for watching Tech Confidentials Behind the Money. I'm Mary Kathleen Flynn at the Econ Ad Seminar.